Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, speaks to directors of three songs for Benazir. Now, the documentary has been nominated for an Oscar and you can watch the documentary on Netflix. Now, Prince Harry last week talked to Gulistan and Elizabeth Mirzae, the director of three songs for Benazir. Taking to social media, the couple shared a picture of their online conversation with the Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry, and wrote, and I quote, We had the honor and privilege to speak with Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, about our film Three Songs for Benazir. They said Prince Harry's love and dedication to Afghanistan is truly inspiring, and we are so grateful to have had the opportunity to share our story with him. Three Songs for Benazir, a short documentary, is nominated for an Oscar. It takes place in a refugee camp in Kabul, Afghanistan. The film, nominated for an Academy Award, is directed by Elizabeth and Gulistan Mirza A.E. And it's nice to see them. It's nice to see them. Look at Prince Harry, looking so handsome. That's Meghan's husband and the father of her two children, Archie and Lilibet Diana. Now, we know that Prince Harry is making a Netflix documentary for the Invictus Games. So it will be really, really, really nice if we all watch it once it gets released and also support Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the synopsis of the three songs for Benazir because Prince Harry by talking to them, must have watched this beautiful, beautiful film. It must be interesting, this documentary. And I also would love to watch it because I haven't watched it right now, but I will be watching it because Prince Harry has indeed made a recommendation to the fans and we'll all do what we do. That is respect Prince Harry and watch this documentary. So I'll tell you a little bit about the the synopsis for the documentary before we proceed to something else that I wanted to talk about. Now, the story, the synopsis is the story of Shaista, a young man who newly married to Benazir and living in a camp for displaced person in Kabul, struggles to balance his dreams of being the first from his tribe to join the Afghan National Army with the responsibilities of starting a family. Even as Shaistar's love for Benazir is palpable, the choices he must make to build a life with her have profound consequences. The winner of three of 13 awards, including the Cinema Eye Honors Outstanding Nonfiction Short and the Audience Award at Clermont Ferrand International Short Film Festival. Festival. Now, the filmmakers are Elizabeth and Gulistan Mirzazei, Film Laila at the Bridge screened and won awards at numerous festivals, including CPH Docs, Locano, Bajen, and Santa Barbara, among others. Their short film, The Three Songs for Benazir, premiered at Full Frame, where it won the Jury Award for Best Short. The film also won Jury Awards at Yamagata International Documentary Film Festival, Odense Film Festival, and Middle East now among others, Gulistan and Elizabeth founded Mirza Zay films to be an indigenous window into modern-day Afghanistan, making films that are recognized for their intimacy, rare access, and how they challenge perceptions of Afghanistan. They are based between California and Kabul, have two and, are, and have two daughters together. At the moment, they are working to help their family and friends in Afghanistan. Such a beautiful, beautiful story and synopsis and just a few words about the filmmakers that are Elizabeth and Gulistan. I've already talked about them. Now, family, we need to watch this documentary. Prince Harry has made a recommendation. So we should be watching this documentary because I will be watching it to see what more about it and understand it. Now, we know that Prince Harry served the veteran community in Afghanistan as, you know, in the military. And for 10 years, 10 years of active 
service. And Prince Harry must have really, really been inspired and loved watching this film, The Three Songs for Benazir. Uh, it has been actually shortlisted for a Best Documentary Short Subject, a beautiful film told by critics, deeply arresting and extraordinary, has been described by critics about this film. So, it's a winner in an outstanding non-fiction short film. So, based on those reviews, that it's a beautiful film, deeply arresting and extraordinary, I deeply, deeply understand why Prince Harry must have recommended this documentary. And you can be sure about one thing. I'll be watching it. I'll be watching it. I hope to tell you more later on in the week about this documentary. So, family, stay tuned. Now, this is something that is beautiful. I love this. You know, Prince Harry worked for 10 years in the UK military. Served 10 years. Is from the Invictus Games. And he'll also be making his own Invictus Games documentary. So, I cannot wait to see that. Correction, we fans cannot wait to see that. Once it's released, we can be sure about one thing. We'll be there to talk about the documentary and spread the word to every single person all around the world and I cannot wait to see it. Now, family, one thing that I also wanted to mention, now, I want to talk about the fact that 100 Jamaican individuals and organizations signed an open letter to Prince William and Kate ahead of their visit. Now, I'll read you what the open letter says. Now, he starts start by saying this, and I quote, I am sharing below the Advocates Network's open letter to William and Kate, who bear the title of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. The letter is signed by 100 individuals, including myself and organizations. The royal couple will arrive in Jamaica on Tuesday, March 22, and depart on Thursday, March 24, as part of their Caribbean tour. Now, let us say this. Dear William and Kate, we note with great concern your visit to our country, Jamaica. During a period when we are still in the throes of a global pandemic and bracing for the full impact of another global crisis associated with the Russian-Ukraine war, many Jamaicans are unaware of your visit as they struggle to cope with the horrendous fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated by pre-existing social and economic hardships inherited from our colonial past. Let me pause there before I continue kindly. You know, royals are doing this trip for PR. For PR, people are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic. We have the Ukraine crisis currently with Russia, the invasion of Russia on Ukraine, which has made the price of oil go up right now price of fuel and oil all of them have gone drastically up and now prince william and kate during all these crises are coming to jamaica to take pictures and do pr for themselves to mark the queen's 70 i don't know if it's 70 or whatever years in the throne because i don't really care much and then they come just to do some pr and take a bunch of photographs in Jamaica. The question is what are you going to do for the people of Jamaica because you've never ever done much. Cutting ribbons are taking pictures visiting people two days a two day three day trip to take pictures and do some PR for yourselves and to take some pictures with black people to show how you're very much not a racist family while hypocritically you kicked out the only mixed race person in the royal family. You bullied her when she was pregnant. That is Megan. You chased her out of your country. That's what the farm plus the UK tablets did to Megan. And now they come to Jamaica for what? For do what? For a PR trip to take pictures. Tell people what you're going to do for them. Are you going to help them reduce the price of fuel in Jamaica? Are you going to help them reduce the price of wheat? flour in Jamaica. You are not. You're just coming there for pictures. At, they, they call it a charm offensive. Seriously? 
Seriously, seriously, that's what they're calling it. That's what all members of the rota working for Prince William are all calling it a charm offensive. Now, let me continue this letter before I talk about more about that. Now, and I quote, let me continue. We also note that your visit is part of the celebrations to mark the 70th anniversary Platinum Jubilee of the coronation of your grandmother and the 60th anniversary of Jamaica's independence. We see no reason to celebrate 70 years of the accession of your grandmother to the British throne because her leadership and that of her predecessors have perpetuated the greatest human rights tragedy in the history of human kind. Our accession to the throne in February 1952 took place 14 years after the 1938 labor uprising against inhumane working or living conditions and treatment of workers, painful legacies of plantation slavery, which persist today. During her 70 years on the throne, your grandmother has done nothing to redress and atone for the suffering of our ancestors that took place during her reign and or during the entire period of British trafficking of Africans, enslavement, indentorship, and colonization. Let me pause there in that letter. Let me pause there. Everything that has been said is true. The former British Prime Minister, uh, his name was David Cameron, when asked for reparation, he says that people should just move on, move on. How can we move on when every single day injustices keep on happening against black people? The effects of colonialism are rampant to this day. Racism is rampant. Rampant. The royal family's highest honor that it issues towards its civilians. It's a depiction of slavery. Reminiscent of what just what happened to George Floyd. It's just a definition. Uh, just the same, same thing. It just shows these awards that are given by the monarch are a, are a depiction of racism, white supremacy, and what constantly happens to people of color. Do you see any difference between that picture of the honors that the royal family gives and what Derek Chauvin did to George Floyd by standing, kneeling on his neck for nine minutes? leading him to lose his life. Do you see any difference? There is no difference. You can't see any difference because there is no difference. The royal family has never atoned for every single one of his actions. The fact that they give out these kinds of medals shows that they are not sorry for what they have done and continue to do to this day. Look at what they did to Megan. They kicked her out of the country. They bullied her out of the country. Bullied her completely out of the country. The Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been proved to constantly lie to the public. Constantly. But yet, do you know who is the person that gets bullied and smeared every single day by UK tablets in the UK? Do you know who the media goes after? They don't go after Boris Johnson. They come after Harry and Meghan. Meghan breeds. UK tablets all are all up in arms against it. That's how UK tablets have behaved. Have behaved. Megan eats an avocado. UK tablets over up in arms against it. Prince Harry doesn't come for a Prince Philip's memorial. All UK tablets that have told him to go back and leave and never return. That have told Harry and Megan how irrelevant they are. All of them all up in arms. Angry at the fact that Prince Harry, the person they bully, is said hate towards and slander constantly at every single opportunity that they get. Is it coming? All of them up in arms, hypocritically. So the royal family has never been sorry for its actions. Never. They can say it all they want, but they don't mean it. These comments about Prince William, we are very much not a racist family, was the biggest lie ever told by the monarchy and the farm. Now let me continue this letter written this open letter to prince william and kate milton written in fact and i quote in fact on september 30 of 2015 former prime minister david cameron addressed a joint 
sitting of both houses of the Jamaican parliament and told us to move on from this painful legacy, merely acknowledging the horrors of slavery and asserting British leadership in the abolition of slavery. Many of us were outraged and demanded an apology through several open letters by former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson, Sir Hilary Beckles, Vice-Chancellor of the University of the West Indies and University of Technology, Jamaica professionals, as well as newspaper articles, including one by Dr. Henley Morgan. We still wait an apology for the offensive and insensitive statements we have not forgotten. As Cameron correctly noted, these wounds run very deep, and deep they do run. Now, we therefore will not participate in your Platinum Jubilee celebration. We will, however, celebrate 60 years of freedom from, Bri from British colonial domination. We are saddened that more progress has not been made given the burden of our colonial inheritance. We nonetheless celebrate the many achievements of great Jamaicans who rejected negative colonial self-concepts and who self-confidently succeeded against tremendous odds. We will also remember and celebrate our freedom fighters, including our national heroes, who bravely fought against British tyrannical rule and abominable human rights abuses. We welcome you to join this celebration. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. I love this. I love this. And I hope that this gets to Prince William and Kate Middleton. Now, as I continue the letter, it says, you, you, who may one day lead the British monarchy, are direct beneficiaries of the wealth accumulated by the royal family over centuries, including that stemming from the trafficking and enslavement of Africans. You therefore have the unique opportunity to redefine the relationship between the British monarchy and the people of Jamaica. Let me pause there for a moment before I continue. You know, this letter is wrong in one thing. In believing that William can have the opportunity to change things. A person who made comments previously, a few years ago, that Africans are responsible for what is happening to wildlife. That Africans should depopulate because it's putting a lot of enormous pressure on wildlife in Africa. While having a, his wife is while his wife was pregnant with his third child. That kind of person should not what you expect to do something that, is, that will change things. A person who apparently, according to Richard Palmer, misspoke or didn't hear clearly that Prince William said that war is alien in Europe. It's only common in Africa and Asia. That person who Richard Palmer, a royal rotter, a member working for the royal rotter, or as Prince Harry calls them perfectly well, the Paris with press card, someone who said, oh, look, I may have misheard. Imagine calling yourself a liar just to protect Prince William. Those kinds of, that kind of person can never be expected to change things. He'll never change things. Someone like that will never change this. A person who authorized his own personal employee, Jason Nov, to issue a statement against Megan, his sister-in-law, in court to help the Daily Mail, a Daily Mail that has caused Megan so much pain, insulted Megan on a daily basis, slandered Megan on a daily basis, every single day, illegally published her letter, illegally, as the court found the Daily Mail liable for illegally publishing Megan's letter. They had to pay money, copyright damages to Megan for what they did. And yet, the de and yet, this person, Prince William, he can never be expected to do much for the people, for, for people of color. He can't be expected to do much because he never will. So those expectations should just dry up. I've shown you previous examples of his actions. So, those expectations that he will be some sort of change, it isn't going to happen. Prince William is Prince Philip's grandson after all. Now, 
as I continue the letter, the letter said this, We urge you to reflect carefully on these 60 reasons why you should apologize and begin a process of reparatory justice. It is unconscionable that enslavers have been compensated under the Slave Compensation Act 1837 with some payments converted into 3.5% government annuities, which lasted until 2015. If you don't know, let me tell you this something that you don't know. The fact that people who lost their slaves, the final payment to slave owners was made in the year 2015. That's what this open letter is talking about, and that is a fact. But yet the slaves that were tortured, as black people, our ancestors, were never compensated for anything. We are told we need to get over it. We need to get over it. While the racism, the effects are felt, are felt to this day, racism continues to this day because of what happened in the past. It continues to this day. People were taught to hate, and to this day, they still hate, unfortunately. And we need change, and racism needs to end. And I hope that that day comes where people can stop hating another based on the color of their skin. As Nelson Mandela said, no one is born hating another based on the color of his skin. You have to learn to hate. Nobody teaches you. Nobody, you, you, you learn to hate because love comes naturally to, your, to the human heart. And people need to learn. People, love comes naturally. You are taught to hate. We have to stop these teachings of hate of hating another. Now, as I continue this letter, now, they say this, we encourage you to act accordingly and say, yeah. Well, no, wait a minute. They say this, we are of the view that an apology for British crimes against humanity, including, but not limited to the exploitation of the indigenous people of Jamaica, the transatlantic trafficking of Africans, the enslavement of Africans, indentorship, and colonization is necessary to begin a process of healing, forgiveness, reconciliation, and compensation. We encourage you to act accordingly and just say, yeah, sorry. Boldly lead a youthful generation in the hope that it is possible to create a future where the philosophy which hold one race superior another inferior is finally and permanently discredited and abandoned and where there is no first class and second class citizens of any nations you know let me stop let me pause there for just a while let me pause in that letter for just a while there first of all these are things which i don't have faith or believe will ever happen especially it won't come from prince william i remember prince harry talking about how the UK needs to address, you know, colonialism, what happened. And he was mocked by the rotter. They brought in some figures to insult him for those kinds of comments that he made. There's only one person who could have ever handled that matter. And that person is Prince Harry. And for, the, for what he did, marrying a mixed race woman, he was bullied out of the UK. They wanted him to abandon his wife, his mixed race wife and children. And he said no. But the institution, the establishment, couldn't allow a mixed race woman and wasn't willing to actively accept her into the monarchy. The wedding that you see that they've been talking about, the wedding was PR for the royal family. But after, they went back to who they are. Because the wedding was brought money for tourism and it lied to people that Megan has been accepted when in reality they never ever accepted her. They were just waiting after the wedding for them to do what it takes to get her out. You already heard those comments from Prince William's Kingston Palace employees. Oh look, their marriage is going to last for two years, three years. Because why? Because they were bullying her and they didn't expect her to stay. They wrote articles saying Megan will bolt. Why would they write such an article saying that Megan will bolt? 
What would they do to her to make her bold from the wedding or bold from marrying Prince Harry or bold from the marriage? And that's why recently you've been hearing talks about uh, UK tablets. I've been hearing some members of the rota saying that, hey, look, Harry feared that Meghan would leave him. What would make Meghan leave Harry? What is it that could be done to Meghan to make her leave Harry? Because she's never ever left Harry. Despite the bullying, despite the insults, despite the racism that she's had to experience, a mixed race woman fell in love with a white prince of the UK. A bunch of racists went after her. Because according to them, she ruined their fantasy. She ruined their fantasy according to them. Because they thought that Prince Harry would look at them. Prince Harry would never have looked at them. Prince Harry fell in love with Meghan, not them. But they believe and blame Meghan for ruining, for ruining their unattainable fantasy. And ladies and gentlemen, Prince William is not the one who's going to do this. He's not going to be the one who's going to fix things. No. In light of his, recent, of his comments, of what we've been hearing him saying, the wildlife comments about Africans to, should depopulate, those comments about from Prince William, made by Prince William, those kinds of comments, those kinds of comments tell us that Prince William isn't going to fix things, the pain of slavery, the anguish of slavery. He isn't going to fix those kinds of things. He'll never ever going to fix, he's never going to fix those things. His treatment of the first mixed race woman to join the royal family should tell you all you need to know. The fact that he authorized his own employee to side with the UK tablet, bullying his brother and his mixed race sister-in-law. That is enough to tell you what side Prince William is on. Now, as I continue, as I continue, they have said that the fact that the UK system is a class system with the royal family at the top, at the top of the class system. Because the royal family is a representation of white supremacy in the UK. I mean, let's not lie to one another. It is that. That's, that's a fact. That's, that's a reality. They are a representation of white supremacy in the UK. That's the royal family. They are. They are that. The fact that we had those kinds of comments how Megan's having to do with Megan's exotic DNA, we saw the coded racist language used by UK tablets to describe Megan. We saw them. It was there. It was they couldn't even hide it. We all saw it. That's why I joined the squad. That's because I saw a woman being bullied and I wanted to do something about it. I saw a woman being bullied and I wanted to do something about it for no reason at all. And when a white sister in law does something like touch her belly, it's okay. But when a mixed race woman does it. It was a crime against humanity. Those kinds of things that I saw maybe join the squad. So I want to ask you squadies, like members of the Sussex Squad Family TV, what made you join the squad first of all? What made you? I'd like to know that. Just leave that in the comment section. I'd like to know that. So, as I've said, the UK Royal Family is a class system. That's, that's what they are. Of white supremacy. That's who they are. That's how they are. That's who they've always been. And they couldn't accept Megan. They've never accepted her and will never ever accept her. And I'm glad that Megan and Harry left that institution because they're going to thrive and be happy. And no weapon that has been formed against Prince Harry and Megan has ever uh, no weapon formed against Prince Harry and Megan has prospered. It's never prospered. They've continued to thrive the marriage remains strong and intact despite the constant bullying and attempts at making her husband abandon his wife and children. It's never worked. Prince Harry has always said that he's all, he will always protect his wife and child. And he's always done that. And so much respect to Prince Harry for his actions. Now, let me continue this letter. Now, he continues by saying this, and where there is no first class and second class citizens of any nation in the royal family, and where the color of a man's skin is of no more significance than the color of his eyes, and finally, where basic human rights are equally guaranteed to all without regard to race. These words were used by Emperor Hill Selassie I in his, 
in his speech to the United Nations General Assembly on 4th October 1963 and was made popular by Bob Marley in the song War. As a Rastafarian, Bob Marley embodied advocacy and is recognized globally for the principles of human rights, equality, reparations, and repatriation. Use, each wa- use these words to create a new narrative and reality of peace for your generation and generations to come with expectations. Hashtag the Advocates Network. Hashtag Jamaica 60. Hashtag Wina is up. So that marks the end of the letter. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I've said throughout this podcast, I don't believe that Prince William is the person to honor this because he's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. The person to do this was Prince Harry. And they chased him out for marrying a mixed race woman. That's what they did. And to this day, they continue bullying and abusing him. And that's part of the reason why the squad exists to fight injustice that we've seen happening towards Prince Harry and Meghan. And we hope to continue our work. And I hope you learn something from this podcast as I end this podcast right now. Thank you, Lydia Washington. Thank you, Fancy Fancy. Thank you, Rosa Robas. Thank you, Kay Castillo. Thank you, all members. Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you, all the members that support this channel. You have no idea how thankful I am. Let's continue fighting injustice. If you are silent in the face of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. And that's not what the squad will ever do. I shall continue voicing our free speech, our opinions on this matter. I've given my opinions. Tell me what you think about it in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe on our channel. And subscribe to our channel and support this channel. With so much love, stay tuned to our next video. And don't forget to subscribe. With so much love, love you family. Sayonara. Hello and welcome back to Sasuka Family TV. As I end this podcast, I'd like to thank you so much for watching our video. It means the absolute world to us. Kindly like, subscribe and support our ever-growing family on YouTube. Kindly hit that like and subscribe button for daily and consistent content. We post every single day and it will mean the absolute world to us if you support our channel by liking, subscribing and leaving a comment below. If you wish to donate to our channel, kindly send to our PayPal email briankiputo95 at gmail.com in our description box or to our Netella account. Also, briankiputo95 at gmail.com. Your support will mean the absolute world to us, with PayPal being the preferred option for this channel. Kindly stay tuned to our next video and thank you, thank you so much to every single person that has ever supported our family. With so much love, stay tuned to our next video and I'm hoping that you're having a great, fantastic day and this podcast made you feel much, much better. Have a great day, family. Thank you.